Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals. Welcome back to my channel. I am a journaler, a journal maker and teacher of journaling courses. And in this video, I'm showing my process making some bulk journals. These are some sewing themed journals and I did share a bit of a series on my channel. Um, yeah, showing my process doing this, doing the covers and then getting the pages ready. Um, the binding and then the embellishing and adding of all the pockets and fabric and lace and all of that kind of thing. Um, I had nine of these journals um, originally and I I slowly plugged away at them. One of them I showed the entire process from start to finish on my channel and with that journal I showed all the different ways that I like to use lace and trim and fabrics uh, with flips and flaps and ruffles and lace on the side of the spine and different types of pockets and all that kind of thing. Um, and then my cat just popped in to say hello there. Hello Keanu. There's his paw. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have just put the camera on every now and then to show how I've made the other journals. Um, and now I'm just showing you what it looks like when I put together the pages. So. I already showed in a previous video how I got the pages ready, how I chose them, how I cut them down to size, measured them and trimmed them and all that kind of thing. Now in this video I'm showing how I arrange them and order them. So I usually when I do a bulk collection of journals I will do the exact same arrangement. Uh, these ones all seem to have a slightly odd order because um, I didn't have the exact same amount of pages for each journal so occasionally I would um, change up the order just because I thought the pages looked better in a different order um, but where possible I do use this as a template so what I do with my bulk journals is I get all the pages ready for all of them in one go but then I arrange one of them first and then for every other journal in the series or the collection I then use this original one as a template that I've already pre-arranged um, and that helps me just to not have to fuss around with what goes where and which patterns and which pages go best next to each other because I've already figured that out with my template but um, yeah like I said I didn't always have the exact same pages so I had to kind of um, make those decisions on the go when I came to a journal and every now and then I will get a page that clashes, so I'll, I'll go off the template. And that's what I mean by um, the template is there as a guide, um, but if I feel like the pages aren't working in a particular journal, then I will just change it up to suit that particular journal. Um, so I think there you could see I had the brown paper bag pocket, and then in one of the journals I had some vellum, but in another journal I didn't go with the vellum on the next page. Um, it's just whatever suits my eye. Um, again with a junk journal I always say this anything goes. With a junk journal you can get away with things clashing that's kind of the point for some people is that all these different pages clash together. Um, so yeah on some occasions I won't mind at all I'll just put pages anywhere and everywhere and however it looks is how it looks and it's all good because that's a junk journal. Uh, but usually when I make my journals, I am thinking about um, having an equal balance of writing space versus decorative pages. Um, and I'm also thinking about, yeah, if there is a pattern or a colored page that goes together, um, making it not clash too much to my eye. And that's going to be a very personal thing. So I know a lot of people will say or ask questions like, how do you decide what pages to go together or they struggle with how to arrange their pages um, but it's I find it, it's a very personal thing it's like how do you decorate your house there are many ways to decorate a house it's just personal taste of what colors you like and what patterns and what things you like that go together um, so there's no right or wrong way to do it it's just whatever you like and um, whenever yeah I get questions about and journal making, yes, I can give you sort of my guidelines and my um, structure that I work with. But at the end of the day, I will just always go back to, you know, um, just get in tune with what you like. Um, yeah, 
and I know that doesn't really help many people, a lot of people. Um, but the more you do it, that's another tip. The more you make journals, the more you can just get this intuitive sense of, I like this, I don't like this, and it's just a very instant thing. And you'll know, okay, I'll put this page there because I like it, or I won't put this page there because I don't like it. And you just will listen to that own inner creativity that you have. Um, and that will tell you what you like and what you don't like and what to do. <laughs> um, yeah, so just keep making them. I know, yeah, when you first start out, it can be a bit of a struggle because, you you know, you're not knowing what you're doing. But, yeah, when you make them over and over and over again, you really do get a taste for it. You do um, get a natural feel for it. And then it just becomes like second nature. You don't even have to think really. You just, yeah, it's that intuitive process of, um, yeah knowing what you like and don't like <laughs> so anyway uh, I hope that was um, helpful and that just seeing how I do it uh, maybe gives you some inspiration for you going off and doing it your way um, because of course you can copy and you can um, use other people as inspiration but uh, hopefully eventually you can listen to your own inner creativity <laughs> and that will um, show you what to do and you'll just feel more and more comfortable the more you create the more you make these journals the more comfortable you will feel with trusting your own instincts and that's when it's really fun I think <laughs> when you can just sit down and you can just create whatever it is that you want to create and yeah I get a lot of well not a lot but the occasional comment or question of have you ever created something you don't like? And yeah, on, on occasion, yes. But really, overall, no. Because I create what I want to create. I create what I like. Um, and that's how I create. I just create what I like. Um, so I feel like, yeah, the more you just get in tune with your own creativity, you're going to naturally always like what you create because you only create what you like <laughs> if I stopped liking what I created I would stop and change it until it is something that I liked um, and yeah it could take some time figuring out what you do like but once you find that out <laughs> you can you can create that um, yeah and I guess I've just always been creative my whole life um, and I'm not sure if that's why I can just create um, and like what I create. Um, but yeah, there have, of course, definitely been uh, occasions where I'm just like, oh, that wasn't good. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Yeah, it's just for me, creating is just a, a therapeutic and joyful and fun process. And I hope that creating for you can be that that creating is not a stressful thing that creating isn't a um yeah any way negative experience for you that creating is only a joyful and fun experience for you so i guess this video has turned out to be a bit of a ramble on um, creativity and thoughts on creativity but yeah if you have any any questions or anything feel free to put them in the comments or email me anytime and I will be, <laughs> look at my cat, look at his little nose <laughs> sticking in on the other side. I love it when he wants to participate. I'm actually um, in Melbourne while I'm filming this video right now. I've got two more days here and then I go back to uh, Queensland. And I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing my cat. Oh, I think there actually was Velen there. I just didn't realize it because you can see through it, obviously. <laughs> um... Oh, maybe not. I, yeah, no, there is vellum there. There is vellum. And then there's that parchment paper type. Uh, in this journal, uh, what I did with the pages is I tried to use one of each different type of blank paper. So there's one coffee dye, one parchment, or two of each, sorry, maybe two of each. Two parchment, two of that marbled effect type of paper, uh, one vellum sheet, one blue marbled type of paper, um... This is some bookend paper. Of course, I wanted to use lots of um, sewing pattern paper from the actual pattern pouches. I think that gives it 
its unique individuality and it just ties in with the theme very well oh by the way these journals are in my etsy some of them have already sold but um if you're looking at these journals and you're like oh can i get my hands on one of those yes there are some left in my etsy i can't remember how many are left actually um but there are i think there's a few left so um definitely check out the link below to willow bound journals i put um my last journals in my etsy back again since i will be back um in two days time uh well actually by the time this video goes up it will be one day um so yeah i'll be able to send out any orders um this week this week yeah <laughs> so for me it's a sunday while i'm filming this and i get back on tuesday and uh, this video will go up tomorrow so yes <laughs> um what else can i say what else can i say yeah i'm basically i kind of call it dealing cards so when i get my pages i lay them all out and i group them so when i get you know your hands your cards are dealt i always group my cards so i arrange them from lowest to highest with the um ace two three four at my left side going up to king on my right hand side so what i do here is I deal them out like cards. I put all the blank pages together. I put all the pattern pages together. I put all the pocket pages together and like all the novelty pages together. So that way they're in their groups and then I can easily just alternate them as I go through the journal. And yeah, so like a doily, I would call that a novelty page. There's a tissue paper page with beautiful flowers on it. I call that a novelty page. Same as the vellum paper. My feature pages are all of the pattern paper ones and then my pocket pages are things like paper bags or glassine bags, um, top loading, side loading, uh, also envelopes, I call those pocket pages because they're top loading pockets and also my sewn pockets, they're my pocket pages as well and then I like to space them out throughout the journal as well. I love these sewing pattern pages with the dresses and the skirts and jackets and things that you can see on there. And then I try to, I do try to alternate. So I usually go blank pattern, blank pattern. Uh, but I will break up that pattern, <laughs> um, that structure by adding like a pocket page here or a novelty page there. Or I might even put two blank pages next to each other or two pattern pages next to each other every now and then just so it has more of that junk journal style with that more random nature to it um, and for me why I do that as well is just to give the journal interest that's the whole point of junk journal for me is that it, it differs to a normal journal in that a normal journal has all blank pages they're all the exact same every page you turn to is exactly the same so what appeals to me about the junk journal is that every page you turn you're getting a different look and it's interesting it's engaging it's inviting so that's one of the things that drew me first to junk journals was the difference of pages and how you could um choose your own pages to go in there the more i've made these journals the more i have found that i prefer blank pages because that's more practical for me that's more usable for me more functional and at the end of the day for me a journal is something to be used and if I can't use it then it's not serving its purpose so for me I've learned over the years that I need a lot of blank pages um, so my style I guess has kind of changed from how it originally started like I went to the op shop while I was down in Melbourne and I was very restrained I didn't get a single book when I first started junk journaling I bought books left right and center because any page I would just chuck in a journal but now I've realized that op shop trip made me realize I've been I'm a lot more selective in what I now choose I don't just choose any random page anymore um, and that does make for a less junky less random type of journal and more structured more um, on theme so the pages are all to do with the theme um, and definitely more blank and writing pages so yeah I don't know I was reflecting back on my junk journal journey and it has become a lot more streamlined 
and I guess less junky. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I'm just making, like I said with the creativity thing, I'm making what I like and what suits me. So, and I love, again, junk journals are for everyone. There's a style for everyone. If you prefer the junky style and more random nature to it, then it's there for you. Junk journals is there for you as a creative outlet. And it's just a matter of finding what you like and what works for you. So yeah, like I said before, I would use a whole bunch of random pages. I would get map pages. I would get text pages. I would get picture pages, everything. I now steer away from pages with text just because I always cover them. And so if I cover them anyway, what's the point of putting text in there? So yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I would usually get illustrated pages and mix them with graph and grid and uh, map and text and everything. But again, that's not what I like anymore. I like just your blank writing pages mixed with my pretty pages. So if I do have a pretty page, I'm not going to be covering that up. The whole point of it being in there is so I can look at it. Um, so for those types of pages, it's not going to be text. I'm going to cover up text. It's not going to be an ugly picture because I'm going to cover up that. It's not going to be a map because I'm going to cover up a map. For me, it's going to be something like a pretty flower or a really beautiful illustration. Anything else, I'm literally just going to cover it up. <laughs> and so I, I won't put anything anymore that I'll cover up because I might as well just put in a blank page. Um, and now I know that if I do keep a page in there that has some decoration on it, it's going to be something that I keep in there to look at and enjoy. Uh, so yeah, the more and more I go on this journey, I realise that the journals that I make for me <laughs> tend to have blank pages. A lot of blank pages. But that works for me because I stick things on. I, I want to stick my own photos on the pages. I want to stick my own ephemera. I think that's also something else I'm learning as well. Um, I buy all this pretty paper and I buy all this pretty wallpaper and lace and vintage pieces and ephemera. But at the end of the day, I just like using my own things that I pick up from my own life. So I'm, I'm struggling with working out how to actually incorporate all those pretty things and vintage things that I pick up. Because, um, yes, it might look pretty, but I don't want to look at something pretty just for the sake of looking at something pretty. <laughs> um, I want something that I can document my life. That's why I journal is so I can document my life. And I would rather an ugly thing that documents my life than a pretty thing that doesn't doc document my life. Um, so yeah, it's really good having this journey to teach me what my values are and what I like. And that's what all this is about. That's, that's what I talk about in the Intentional Life course. It's always just about finding what works for you, what you like, what you don't like, and then running with that. Um, and we're all different and that's good and it's just a matter of you find out what you like and run with that and another person finds out what they like and they run with that so, all right so I've cut everything down turned everything down to fit that's uh, good to go and then they are all finished now that's the last video in the series showing how I made these journals so I hope you enjoyed that very rambly session I'll see you in the next video bye guys a big special thank you to all my patrons in December who supported me and Willow Band journals with the vision to bring light and love to the world through storytelling journaling and creativity and inspiration you guys without you I could not do what I do full-time so thank you thank you so much you allow me to do videos and make journals and teach journaling courses so know that you are having a huge impact on not only my life but all the people who watch the videos uh, get one of my journals or do one of my courses if you would like to become a patron in January uh, the link will be down below in the description box that gives you access to extra videos printables behind the scenes looks personal updates first access to my journals and you'll be just supporting me and I just can't thank you enough for that helping my dream come true. May you journal your life because your stories matter.